بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم محمد ونسلی علیہ رسول کریم دا پرپز آف دس سیشن از ٹو ڈسکرائب سم آف دی کی فیچرز آف اسلامک مینجمنٹ تھیری بفور دیٹ ویل ڈسکس سم آف دی ایزمشنز ایسوسیٹیڈ ود اسلامک مینجمنٹ دیر آر فور ایزمشنز فسٹ آف آل امپلائیز آر ہیومن بینگ they are muslims and they have some role to play in the society where they live and after that they are the employees of the organization the implication of these assumptions are that when they are human then treat them like a human and some of them are muslims therefore as a muslim they have some rights so the organization need to keep in mind their rights. Thirdly, they have the role to play in the society. They need some time to contribute in the development of the society where they are living. And this means that the organization should take appropriate amount of work so that employees should have some time to do something for the society where they are living. And the fourth one, after taking all these elements into consideration, then they are the employees of the organization, then the organization should take work from them. So the features, the first feature is <coughs> that uh, This theory is based upon the divine underpinning and support. For example, if you look at this ayah, this ayah is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us that you need to obey your managers, your rulers, and this means that you are obeying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it also means that then he is uh, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has defined this structure, defined the importance of the rulers, managers, and whosoever are in the authority. Second assumption is, and the feature is, that there is a reward of work in this world as well as in the hereafter. So here is one of the hadith which is saying that one third of the reward, whatever you are doing, are doing means you are doing work or you are doing good deeds will be given you in the hereafter. So two thirds will be paid in this world. Similarly, we have this ayah that somebody is praying five times a day. So his reward in this world is that his daily bread is made easy. And four rewards will be given in the hereafter. So whether you work or whether you do other parts of worship, you will be getting reward in this world as well as, as well as in the hereafter. The third feature of this theory is that there is a relationship between work, family and society. Because existing theories are not considering these elements in their practices. Let's say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering work Uh, to get the halal earnings. And when this halal earning one person is spending upon his family, then he is getting reward. And if he is spending on poor people or any other social uh, matter, then he is also getting reward. Let's see some of the related hadith about this. Here is the uh, ayah. آف سورات الجمعہ 
where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you finish the Juma, you may disperse through the land and seek the body of Allah. No, you need to go to work. No, you can start your own business, etc. And then this is uh, the hadith saying to the leader's effect. <coughs> <coughs> Erling was best, and he replied, I mean, the best earning which a person can eat is of his own head. So here, one sahabi is asking about uh, what is the best earning. And Prophet is saying, to the nearest effect, that the money you make through business transaction or you make through your own work. And then we spend on the family. So that this is saying to the nearest effect, when someone spends on his family, seeking his reward for it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is counted as charity. So here, if this person is working and getting money and spending on his family, then he is getting reward. This is what we are trying to say that there is a relationship between family and uh, work and also this hadith is telling us that if somebody is spending on other work of charity uh, then he is also rewarded. He is spending on poor people, windows, orphans, etc. And also it includes that somebody is uh, living in the society where people get sick. So he is visiting them. So he is making or developing relationship with his uh, neighbors, his uh, relatives and other Muslim brothers. And also taking part in the funeral and taking part in marriage ceremonies and also vis visiting uh, other relatives. And in regard to the rights of people, there are also rights of non-Muslims. If somebody is living next to you, next to you, then he has the right as a neighbor. So you need to fulfill those rights. And the fourth feature is that this theory provides self-control through honesty. So here, the uh, 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 yellow part of this uh, hadith, the best thing is to work honestly in their property. I mean, that the person who is working for someone, then he is and he is, should be working with honesty. Because he believes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him. So he needs minimum control because he is working for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get the halal earning because that halal earning is the basis of his other part of, parts of worship. And it should be kept in mind that halal earning is, a, is also a, a kind of worship. It is not behind the worship. And similarly, we have this hadith to the nearest effect. And the slave of a man is a guardian of his master's property and is responsible for it. So again, well, this is contributing towards the honesty because the slave or the subordinate need to protect the property of the person to whom he is working. And because of his work, he is contributing towards the wealth creation activities of uh, wealth creation uh, activities and that is one of the objective of the organization as a whole. So this person need to you know do work honestly so that his manager, his master, owner should be happy with him. And this is a very famous hadith about this feature that pay salary wages in advance. 
So Prophet ﷺ said to the nearest effect, pay the laborer his wages before his sweat dries. So this means that the wages should be paid in advance and when somebody will be working, then the sweat will come out. And it tells us that it implies that we should be paying salary and wages in advance. Then kindness to subordinates. So here there are some advice from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look at the highlighted part of the text, anyone with these three qualities shall be under the shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on the day of resurrection. And one of them is the person who is kind to his slave. This is a big uh, great tiding for those who are doing good with the, their uh, subordinates. Managing issues sympathetically. So the objective of Islamic management is to create a healthy environment of working. However, as a human being, employees will be making mistakes. Then uh, the managers and they should be treating them in a sympathetic way. For example, one companion came and asked Prophet Sallallahu how many times I should forgive my slave. Prophet Sallallahu replied, 70 times a day. So that is the big, you know, virtue from the perspective of the slave. If he is being pardoned once and again, then obviously he will be loyal to the person to whom he is working. And this is another aspect that whenever your subordinates are making mistake, then consider their past contribution in your organization for yourself. And here is a story that Prophet was about to attack on Makkah and he wanted to keep it secret so that a bloodshed should be avoided. But one of the companions who had participated in the Battle of Badr had a family in Makkah and he did not have any other member of his family over there. <coughs> So he sent the letter to Quraysh uh, about the intentions of Muslims to gain their favor so that in case of battle they should be looking after his family. So Prophet ﷺ called this uh, companion and he explained his reason for sending the letter which was recovered. Then Prophet did not take any punitive action because this companion took part in the first military encounter between Muslims and the pagans of Makkah. And similarly, there is another ayah of Surah al Ari Imran that if your subordinates they are making mistake, then forgive them and repent for them and consult them. So that is, these three elements are very helpful for dealing with the mistakes of your subordinates. And similarly, another feature of the Islamic management is that Prophet ﷺ used to give supplication before sending any of his companion for uh, some just for, uh, for any assignment here you can see the highlighted part of this hadith the prophet is giving dua to muzaffar and it happened during the battle of trench the next one is take work according to the capacity capacity of employees so here we have uh, 
this hadith that we should take work according to the capacity of the employee. And the next one is more threatening. Prophet is saying to the nearest effect, and if somebody is forcing someone behind his capacity, then I shall be, I shall plead him on the day of resurrection. I shall be against him for the, uh, uh, for the, for taking, uh, you know, work by force. And similarly, we have next feature that loyalty is created through divine guidance and prayer. This is for everyone, but especially for subordinates. For example, Prophet said to the nearest effect, undoubtedly, reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala includes honoring, you know, many people, including a just ruler, your manager, your boss, your owner. And when you would be honoring him, then it is like the reverence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a big offer is given to us. And similarly, we have another uh, similar hadith. He who honors a king appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor him on the day of resurrection. And also is Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compulsory. Like this hadith is saying, you need to obey. Because this obedience will lead you to the success. And what Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying here, if somebody is obeying the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is obeying Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is obeying the leader of the Muslims. And similarly, we have uh, when you are helping your manager, your boss, to discharge his duties, it is a virtuous work. Look at the highlighted text. He who visits a ruler to help him is under the security of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody wants the security of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is very easy. That we need to visit our managers, seniors, to help them out for discharging their responsibilities. The next one is that the rules have been designed, defined in Islamic management theory about organizations, managers, and employees. And we have included this in my book, Introduction to Islamic management theory. And the next feature is the Islamic management theory is offering flat organization structure. For example, this hadith is saying to the nearest effect that if three of you are traveling, then one of you should be the Amir, should be the leader. And at the occasion of the Battle of Trench, Prophet ﷺ established a team of 10 companions and they were allocated a specific job. And this means that the span of control was 1 to 10. And here, according to this hadith, the span of control is 1 to 3. And similarly, we are moving towards the next uh, feature that we have examined five major theories or five major contemporary theory, theories of management. And we have found that their features have already practiced by Prophet centuries ago. And these theories were System theory of management, classical theory, scientific management, scientific uh, management theory, human relation movement, and contingency theory. 
Here, I would like to give you only examples of system theory and contingency theory. System theorists believe that organization is made up of many parts. If one part is working well, then other parts will be also taking benefit of it. And the whole organization will do work well. Prophet Sallallahu said two hadiths about it. One hadith is that there is a part in the human body. If it works well, then the entire body works well. And if it doesn't work well, then the entire body will malfunction. And that is the heart. Second hadith is that uh, Muslims are like one body. If one body is feeling pain, then other parts are also feeling pain. And we experience that if there is a pain or infection in the finger, then the entire body feels it. The pain of a finger is felt by every part of the body. Sometimes uh, other diseases uh, may attack because of this infection. And the second is contingency theory. Contingency theories, theorists believe that there is no best way to manage and to manage an organization or to make decision. So it depends upon the environment, it depends upon the situation. Prophet fought three battles. The battle of Ohud, the battle of Trench, the battle of Tabuk with three different strategies. So this suggests that Prophet already practiced the contingency theory of management. So we have explained in a separate book about all these theories and we have concluded that Prophet had already practiced the suggestions and the rules of these theories. And Islamic management theory is based upon case study. Case study of Prophet So most of the literature we have we, we have borrowed from the life of Prophet is guided uh, caliphs and the companion. So this means that the concepts and the features this theory has, they have already been practiced. Practiced by Prophet practiced by his uh, rightly guided caliphs and his companions. And similarly, it is a universally applicable theory. First of all, uh, as we have said, the assumption is that implies are humans. And when they are humans, they treat them like humans. And features like paying in advance, treating them, their mistakes sympathetically. They are not only limited with Muslims. They are applicable to everyone. Everyone wants to receive uh, wages and salary, salaries in advance. Everyone wants to be treated sympathetically when they are making some mistake so and so forth and uh, last but not least the in Islamic management theory is an improvement over all the theories which have so far been put or they have been practiced and as I said one feature is distinguishing uh, making distinct Islamic theory from the other theories. That is, that this, it has divine support. It has uh, the support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. And features like paying uh, salaries in advance and also supplication whenever somebody is deputing and advice for employees to help uh, uh, their managers, they are on top of that. And all those 
are making it different from other theories. So we have concluded after a comparison of Islamic theory and other theories that this is one of the best theory and it is really an improvement over the existing theories. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding of what we have said and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to practice this. Uh, and this practice we can start from our family because family is, uh, is also an organization. Family is the organization which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in the first instance. And then we can apply in the organizations. We can apply in the businesses, so and so forth. This presentation I have taken from my book, Principles of Islamic Management. I take your permission with these words. Wa akhir dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen.